Hey guys, so a lot of you have been asking me about what you should be doing to prepare for the House of Wolves. Faction packages, engrams, weapons, and stuff like that. So today I wanted to help prepare all of you with a House of Wolves pre-launch guide. This is for those of you who want to make the most out of the launch of the House of Wolves. The most frequent question I get is with regards to faction packages, cryptarch packages, stuff like that. So let's cover what's gonna work and what's not gonna work. First, faction packages. If you have any packages stored in hopes of being able to break open a whole bunch of them and getting some armor and weapons and whatnot, that's not going to work. At least it didn't work when we went into the Dark Below. Anything earned now in the Dark Below will reward Dark Below items. The same goes for engrams as well. Any engrams earned in the Dark Below will reward Dark Below items. However, I've been told by some clanmates that Cryptarch packages do not roll their engrams until you actually take the package. So if you wanted to, you could save Cryptarch packages and try at least. Engrams themselves, once again, will not work. Those are rolled as you receive them. We know that Vendor Gear is only going to be level 32, so those with Crota's End Gear will not have to worry about getting armor. Weapons in House of Wolves are starting at 331, and the only way to upgrade them is with Etheric Light, so you're not really going to gain an edge in that department either. Commendations are not going to play any sort of a role with regards to having to use them to purchase anything. Instead, Commendations will now grant you 250 reputation, which plays into what I'm about to say. What I would recommend doing is getting your factions to 99% experience so that all you need to do is turn in one or two bounties to have yourself get enough experience to have one of those factions level. Then, when House of Wolves rolls around, you can turn them in and can have a Crucible, Vanguard, New Monarchy, Dead Orbit, and Future War Cult package waiting for you. Same thing works with the Cryptarch. For those of you who are not level 32, this is very viable for armor, but for everyone else this is viable if you want a new weapon right as the game releases. All that being said, there isn't going to be a way to just get level 33 from buying stuff or from packages and marks, and you need an etheric light to upgrade any weapon to 365. So if you're not prepared with reputation or marks or anything like that, it's really not going to be the biggest deal in the world. However, on a technical level, you would be able to hit level 34 on the first day of House of Wolves with some luck. You can upgrade an exotic armor piece with an exotic shard, supposedly. You can get an armor piece from Prison of Elders level 32, and if you ran the Nightfall on three characters and got two etheric light from those, you could very much hit level 34. Level 33 on day one is going to be pretty reasonable, but you can't get it just from buying stuff and crafty leveling. You need to go out and actually do stuff in order to hit level 33. With certain vendor items going out the door, you have a couple of weeks to stock up on marks and buy something that you might want to bring with you into the future. So, what should you consider buying? Well, armor-wise, we're mainly going to be looking at stuff that's going to be good for PvP, in which your selections are pretty limited. I'm going to be looking for a very specific set of bonuses, mainly in the glove department. Increased melee attack speed and increased reload speed with a weapon. Hand cannons are very strong, so we're going to be looking for that specifically. Dead Orbit has increased reload speed with hand cannons and melee attack speed for all classes, but it's discipline and strength, not the most ideal. Future War Cult has intellect discipline gloves with increased reload speed with hand cannons, but not increased melee attack speed. New Monarchy has auto or pulse rifle attack speed, so not the best there. Titans, the best you're going to do for that hand cannon bonus is probably going to be the Dead Orbit gloves. Lord Shax, Crucible, has auto rifle and increased attack speed in case auto rifles are ever buffed. Warlocks, you have the option of the Viper Spine 2 from a core array, hand cannon reload speed and melee attack speed, but the stats are intellect strength, which is not the best. Hunters, the Gravebreaker 2.2s are going to be your best bet, into like discipline with reload speed on hand cannons and increased grenade throw distance. Otherwise, I don't think armor is as important. We'll be getting a fresh set of armor with House of Wolves. Nothing stands out as the supreme PvP gear, and I imagine a lot of people will want to buy the new, really good looking armor with House of Wolves. Obviously, if you want any class items, be sure to grab those as well. Let's talk about weapons now. From the Vanguard, consider buying one of the following. Another NITC, Secret Handshake, LDR 5001, or MG18A Harm's Way. NITC has Outlaw, which is great. 
Secret Handshake has Shot Package, LDR has a lot of aim assist for PvP, and the MG18 has Crowd Control and Rodeo, both of which are stellar bonuses. From the Crucible, consider buying the Saturnine Rapier, to a freaky 1969, to the Morg, against all odds, Valedictorian 944, or the Longbow. There's a lot of good stuff available here if you want to stock up on something you're weak in, and this goes for both PvE and PvP. I don't think you need the Saturnine Rapier too much if you have a Fatebringer, same if you bought a Gellion's Demise from Iron Banner with the Fatebringer package. Tewoof Paki is just a solid hand cannon overall to have, although once again, if you have Fatebringer, you're pretty much covered. Two to the Morgue is a Phil Winters-esque shotgun with a lot of impact and pretty good bonuses for PvE. Against All Odds has good PvE bonuses and Field Scout, which is great, and Valedictorian has great PvP bonuses with Clown Cartridge and Grenades and Horseshoes, despite its slow velocity. I know a lot of people are fans of the Longbow as well, although I don't have any personal experience with the weapon. I will give an honorable mention to Three Little Words as well, as it's a pretty powerful PvP pulse rifle literation, although I like Red Death a little bit more. From the other factions, we're going to be looking at stuff like the Vanquisher 8 from New Monarchy and Deviant Gravity from Dead Orbit. To a lesser extent, we're looking at the Judgment Shotgun and the Prestige Heavy Machine Gun from New Monarchy, and to an even lesser extent, the Chance from Future War Cult. Vanquisher is going to be a pretty solid weapon if auto rifles get buffed again, and Deviant Gravity is just a pretty good heavy overall. Judgment is a somewhat popular shotgun for those without Felwinter's Lie, and you know Felwinter's is going to get nerfed eventually. And the Prestige Heavy Machine Gun has some pretty good bonuses if you're into those super fast firing weapons. However, Judgment is being sold in House of Wolves with new bonuses as well, and those new bonuses are pretty good. The Chance, the future War Cult hand cannon, gets an honorable mention if you roll with Field Scout basically 100% of the time, since the gun only comes with 6 shots without Field Scout. Now what about priority upgrading? With Prison of Elders being the way that it is, I am a believer of shotguns. I used basically only Invective and Found Verdict in my special slot, and with Elemental Primary Weapons being very good for Prison of Elders, you're going to have your Special and Heavy slots more open for Exotics. Invective and Fourth Horseman are going to be very solid weapons to have ready for Prison of Elders, and you'll be able to upgrade them day one if you so choose. Can't believe I'm saying this, but Invective is going to be one of my first exotic weapon upgrades strictly because of Prison of Elders. I think it's going to be very, very good. If you have a Solar Damage Secret Handshake, that's a pretty good equal. Speaking of Prison of Elders, my arsenal is very diversified, and I suggest leveling up any weapons you might have banked to prepare. I have elemental primary weapons ready, shotguns of every damage element, heavy machine guns of every element, all ready to go. You're going to want that versatility to make your life easier in Prison of Elders for the changing environments, the modifiers, and the enemy types that you'll be fighting. Beyond that, start stocking up on shards and energy. Run as many raids as you can because those shards are going to be worth a good chunk of change come House of Wolves. For example, I have 760 Ascendant Shards and 326 Radiant Shards. At a rate of one shard for 250 Glimmer, that's 271,500 Glimmer. At a rate of 1 energy for 200 glimmer, that being after conversion, that's 155,800 glimmer for 779 energy, total over 400,000 glimmer. All of you are pretty much going to see your net worth skyrocket, so don't worry too much about glimmer unless you're low on shards and energy. Try to stock up on planetary materials if you don't plan on buying any weapons in case you want to power level any gear you might get within the first day or two. Speaking of power leveling, start stocking up on those bounties that award 5,000 experience a few days before House of Wolves just so you have those ready to turn in. Public event packages are also a very good thing to stock up on. You won't be able to max out your Postmaster with them unless you already started, but you can get 12 or 13 packages worth 2,500 experience each, I think it's 2,500, for a good boost in experience for power leveling. That is all I have for you guys on how to prepare for the House of Wolves. It is definitely not as intense as Dark Below preparation could have been. Dark Below allowed for a lot more possibilities for getting to level 31 without actually having to go do anything, weapons and stuff, but Bungie seems to have all that stuff on lockdown this time around, so it's not as urgent as Dark Below could have been. Anyway guys, that's going to do it for me. Thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.